Okay, so once we have the basics of Buffalo Gals, like we've done with some of the other tunes, we could incorporate some other rhythms and maybe some grace notes or slides and some drones to make it a little bit more fancy and give us some variations in case we needed to repeat many times for a dance or something like that. So we'll start with those basics here. One, two, three, four. <laughs> some rhythms so instead of I could turn it into a like a gooseberry apple and in line two I could do the same thing I could put so this is like the second note of measure one this would be the second note of measure five I'm just instead of that quarter note I'm putting two little eighth notes and then the two notes um, the second two notes second note in measure seven could become two little notes so we could try that line two just kind of like a more peppy sound, right? Gooseberry apple. Okay, and then we're ending up here on an A. The next note is also an A. It's the three on the E. So they're an octave, but I mean, that's kind of a ways. So we could fill that gap a little bit with a few grace notes. So like little notes that come in between the beats. So instead of just starting line three with a, I could do a little run up, open one, two, three. I could do F sharp and then G sharp. So that's a high two and then my third finger, just all in that same down bow. Same thing here, but it's an up bow now. And I could do a slide into it. the top of a wave or something. Okay, and next we could add some drones. So I could do all of these same fingers and I could just make my bow stay on A and E the whole time. No string crossings at all. I find that that, we kind of lose a few of the melody notes. So they're the E's actually. Or, so those, you kind of lost with that, uh, the A drone down below. So instead of that, I could play those as fourth fingers. So it would be the first note of measure three, the first two notes of measure seven, the first note of measure 11, and the first two notes of measure 15. Those could be fours instead, and otherwise I could just keep my bow on those two strings the whole time. So we'll check it out, see if we can kind of pick out the melody a little bit better in those spots. So what we end up with is actually the, like this, um, they're both E's, a little bit of a different tone quality on them, but together, it kind of sounds like two violins just playing an E, you know, together. So that's an idea. And then another idea for drones, a little bit more fancy here. Let's... Okay, so that's my D, A. All right, I'm just in standard tuning. I could actually do an alternate tuning. So I could tune this D up to an E note. This is a, an octave lower than the open E, or yeah, this, this open E. Now this is an open E as well. for a moment. But this gives the violin a very nice open sound. And just to show you, I'm not going to actually use this string, but um, a true cross tuning, what we call cross tuning in Appalachian and old time music would be to tune this G up to an A as well. So now we have A, E, A, E. So we notice that the top two strings are the same as standard tuning and it's safer for them to be that way. You might be able to get a little bit of alternate tuning out of the um, A string, but definitely don't mess with the E, make it go higher. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a cross tuning. And it gives us, yeah, 
yeah, this just like really different open sound and lots of harmonies to play around with. So for this tune, I really didn't need to tune my, my low string there, but it's okay. Um, just give you that example. And then what I would do here would be to keep all those same fingers I just did, including the fours. But now anytime that my fingers are on the A string, I'm also going to be having my bow go down and um, catch that lower string. So the two middle strings. And then every time my fingers are on the E string, my bow would also be on that next lower string. So what's still the A string. So I'm just kind of going back and forth between the two middle strings and the two upper strings and just whatever my fingers are doing, I have the next lower string in the mix as well. So let's hear this one. Assuming I'm still in tune. That's okay. All right, I'll try this out. Yeah, just kind of a cool sound. That's why that cross tuning is really nice. All right, we have some ideas. Enjoy. <laughs> 